Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here another Range Rover. This one is a 4.4. Now this one is the usual story. Um, no, I know I, we, I'm sorry to mention this a lot, but it's been to other places. Um, and I know some people would say, how come every car? I noticed in the comments some people say, how come a lot of cars that come to you, you always say someone else is best around with it. That's why that's why this guy's driven 100 miles to come to me. If, if um, his local mechanic could sort it, he wouldn't be driving here to me. So yeah, what usually happens is people try their local mechanics, they don't get anywhere or they've been there three or four times and th their engine light still isn't fixed. Um, then they end up researching the issue and obviously find me and uh, take the step into coming down here. Not everyone does that, of course. Some people will follow my videos and get the vehicle sorted themselves, which is the whole point of why I make the videos. I haven't made videos to drive up sales for myself. It's just. Um, just making the videos to help people really but um, yeah just gonna move this over so it's next to my van and um, we'll have a look at what's going on he has parked it behind my van so I'm just gonna move it over close to the side door here I do like these Range Rovers I think these are probably one of the nicest this has got the digital screen as well okay so the engine lights on I'll see the engines hot it's just just arrived let's have a look it's got 99,000 miles on it so a little bit irrelevant to the to the video. Just going to talk about this tool. I did did like this tool, but now that the software's run out, it seems to exiting diagnostic program. It doesn't want to do anything. As any, I don't know if anyone else has that problem with one of these, but it's asking me to pay for an update basically, and then it will work. So anyway, I'm going to use my launch Euro. This is a new one. Okay, so this is the car. Let's get it plugged in. Okay, we're just gonna have to wait for that to load up. Okay, we're in. We're gonna hit scan. Oh my god, 14 faults. We have a lot of red hair. Finish scanning invalid data from the vehicle dynamics control module P2463 block DPF block DPF start to request engine oil level sensor. This must have had a flat battery catalyst temperature sensor bank one sensor two. Lost communication with the body control module. It's lost communication with a lot of stuff. So I think this has had a flat battery. I think what I'm going to do is just put the ignition on and we'll clear some fault codes, have it on a test drive, and see what comes back. We've got way too many codes here. Okay, we've got some live data up here. We can't seem to find the DPF pressure, but what we did can find is the DPF soot accumulation using the differential pressure, which is 30 grams, it needs to be below six. So we have got a block DPF. Just can't read the actual live pressure for some reason. It's not listed here. Success, this is the sort of regen information there. Demanded regens were seven and it's only had one successful one. Okay, the fault code that we're left with after clearing is diesel particulate regeneration frequency. Let's clear all that off and do another full scan again. See what we're coming back with. I have just taken it around the block. parking control module and just a block DPF. There's got to be more to it than just a block DPF though. Uh, I mean unless it's it's log default because regeneration frequency could mean it's it's been doing too many regens but it doesn't look like that's been the case. It's only had one successful regen since its last reset 
uh, then I gave up basically. Okay, so out of curiosity, what I'm doing here is using a different brand tool, which is an Autel. Sometimes if there's a, a live data paid missing, uh, use a different brand and sometimes you can find it. Uh, so we're looking for differential pressure or soot. So it, was a, it was on the Altel as, sorry, the launch. It was listed as uh, soot inferred by the differential pressure. Uh, DP, no. Regeneration, no. I can't seem to find much on here, really. None of it is here. With the exhaust gas position sensor. So I need to see if we can find any, anything related to the particle filter. Let's type in particle, no. Right, so we can't seem to find anything on here either. It's even worse, to be honest with you. Okay, so the next step I'm doing here is I'm trying to reset the DPF, which is basically telling it's had a new one, because what I want to do here is test drive the vehicle and see does the vehicle attempt to do a regen, or, um, yeah, will it, will it reach temperature, is it trying to do a regen, all of that sort of thing. So the only way I can do that is to clear the fault, and the only way to clear the fault is to tell her it's got a new DPF. Um, let's try and see if that's working. Okay, we're not having the best of success with the scan tools on this because the Autel doesn't want to reset the DPF, so let's just get the launch plug back in. Okay, let's see if we can get these faults reset this time. Okay, so the same sort of procedure again, we're just going to do a reset on the DPF. Okay, now we're going to just try and clear the fault code again. Clear. Read. Okay, looks like it's been done this time. Let me just go back and start the engine and we'll confirm that it has been reset. So the light's gone. Let's just read the fault codes again because sometimes it will come back. Okay, that's gone. So now we can just check on the live data and get a better idea of what's going on. Now I do not recommend anyone resetting DPF values, on a, especially on a car that's got a black DPF. Always do it. If you are doing it, do it immediately after it's been cleaned. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the on the exhaust gas temperatures here and if it gets hot I'm switching the engine off so what I'm going to do is this car is going to have a DPF flush anyway uh, but I just need to sort of figure out what's going on and for me to do that I need to basically get the DPF system back online. The only way to get the DPF system back online working to try and attempt to do anything is to do this reset that I've done. Okay so we can see that I've reset that to zero which it was on 30 grams. I'm um, just going to keep an eye on these so we've got three temperature sensors which are in the red here. So we're just going to give the vehicle a few revs. Let's see if it looks like it's getting a reading from the pressure sensors. Now we've got one coming to the what I would normally call the green area, so it's, it's turned white. Sensor 3 has just reached we haven't got any movement from sensor 2 yet, so I'm just going to take it on a drive. The engine sounds beautiful in this, it almost sounds like a V8 petrol. Growly. Okay, quick look here so far, we still haven't got movement on sensor 2, so it looks like we might have an issue with that, we'll have to have a look. I don't know if it's even fitted to the car, but we'll, we'll check that. Okay, short test drive done. I'm surprised to see this is doing 35 miles per gallon nearly. So we don't have any faults back yet, but obviously this one, bank one, sensor two, no movement. We've only got a slight increase back on the grams of soot so far. That will adjust back up soon. Um, we haven't got the DPF hot. Let's see if any fault codes have returned. None, which is strange. If that sensor is not working, I'd expect to see a fault code for it. We don't have any fault codes back anywhere else apart from these two minor ones. Okay, so I've just had a quick look under the car here and I've, I've found a problem. So, yeah, I've had a quick little roll under there. Sorry about my hair today, um, but let's go under and I'll show you what I found. So here is the exhaust gas temperature sensor number two. I uh, can't really get my hand over there because I'm trying to hold the camera, but uh, let me see. Swap hands. There's the wires. It's literally come off. Uh, don't know how that's not logging up a fault code. It was at the start, but I think it was at the start, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was along with maybe 40 others, but 
that is definitely an issue so um, let's get that changed over okay so I've got my little Land Rover spares drawer here and here is the correct sensor okay so now I've I've been questioned by the customer I've just taken that out yeah is this definitely the problem though and if you've put this in is it going to fix the car will it will it stop going back into DPF blocked um, because he said he's got three of these cars and they've all spent at least three months at uh, a Polish mechanic that he uses and uh, I can see why he's asking I mean he's probably lost faith in people or whatever but it's hard for me to say his car isn't going to give any more issues after I fitted this all I can say is I can fix the faults that I can see uh, and then we go from there um, there is a difference in oh let's try and put this on and see if that works this is broken and I can see on the live data it's not working so let's replace this see how the vehicle goes I don't know if you've got other issues because I haven't driven the vehicle long enough but let's fix this clean the DPF or we'll probably drive the car for a little bit longer see if we can get a reading from this and then if it's sold well we'll clean out the DPF and I don't think we should see any more issues as long as that's the only fault that I can find now as everyone knows the more you dig into a car sometimes you will come across secondary third or fourth or fifth problems that you that you find but this is what I found and this is what we're gonna fix okay so the new sensor has been fitted now we're just gonna drive the vehicle and see if we got all of these numbers looking right and just like that a quick trip around the block and we've got bank 2 sensor giving a nice reading there okay now we are going to clean out the DPF same as you as I've usually done in all my videos then we just hold the revs up I've rinsed out these mild struggle a little bit now I have done a 10 miles or so test drive on this vehicle we we'll just read the fault codes to confirm that they're not there so these were the only two fault codes we've got left just a mirror heater and parking assistance module so if we let's come back from here and see if I can find a fault code that it originally had for the temperature sensor I think there was one there uh, diagnostic history so we had soot accumulation Catalyst temperature sensor, bank one, sensor two, which was the fault code P04D00, right there. I know we've got a lot of other stuff here, but so the one other one that I probably will check on is the oil temperature sensor there. We'll have a look at that on live data. You can see there we've got a reading of 102 degrees. If we give that a minute, oh there we go, we can see that it's moving, coming down to 101. There we go. So if we leave, leave that for a couple of minutes that will come down so we can see that temperature sensor is working. So that's it, Range Rover 4.4 V8 diesel and see you on the next video.